Hi everyone, it's Lillian here coming to you from Spruce Grove, Alberta, Canada. And today is February 18th. It's a Thursday and I know that's a totally different day than I usually come. Usually it's Wednesday or not Wednesday, Monday evening at seven o'clock. But I was playing with the new uh, stamp and cut to the boss machine, the mini one, and I wanted to just pop on and show you a little bit about it and also a new technique that you can do with either of the machines. So here is the big stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, I've got the sides folded up and here's the mini. So you can see the difference in size, quite significant. The significant difference in weight as well. There, there's a difference in what they can do in that this one can't hold the big ones, uh, the big dies, the big embossing folders. But boy, this is sure handy to have on your desk or if you're traveling and use all the mini embossing folders and lots of the dies fit in here, lots and lots and lots. So let's go down to my desk and explore this mini a little bit more. Now, got my hands full of embossing machines, so let's uh, go right down to the desk. And I've got the camera a little higher today and let's see oh right we've got to angle the phone a little better there we go and move this over and move the big stamp and cut in a boss machine out of the way and then connect to the computer so I don't know about what it's what it's like where you are, but here there's a beautiful blue sky, the sun is shining, and well, basically life just doesn't get much better, right? So um, I see a few, few of you on, so thank you. Say, hi, Diana. I'm so glad you hopped on and said hi. So maybe I better keep the large one close just for a little bit longer. So looking from above here, you can see the difference in size. They function much the same. So here's the little mini, so, so cute. Hi, Catherine, welcome. So the these pop down just like in the large one, and there is the handle for turning like this. Now, when you get the large one, you have to attach the handle yourself, but on the small one, it comes all attached. And the only reason you have to attach it on the large one is for shipping. It just, that handle can take up space. So that's what it looks like. Hello, Sue. Hello, everyone. All right, when you get this little machine, just like with the larger one, you get a packet of plates that come with it. You also get instructions. You know, when all else fails, read the instructions. Um, and I think one of the key things in the instructions is that if it your sandwich, we call it a sandwich when you build your paper with your plates. If the sandwich is not going through, don't force it. That means you likely need to readjust your sandwich. So the instructions are right here. Yes, there are more, but they're in other languages. So the basic instructions are right there. The other plus is the instructions are, are also on the plates. So for your basic cutting, you would need plate number one, and it's got here one and then the two twos. So we are going to put down the one plate and let me just find something that we're going to cut here. We are going to cut out um, a circle. So we need the number one and then we need two twos. Now this, these plates are brand new. You can see that I have just started to use them as opposed to what they'll look like in a little bit. Um, so this is what my plate for my big one looks like, the bottom plate. Now that's a, another clue. Um, when you are using your plates, keep the one that you're cutting into always on the bottom and the other one on top. And if they get so that there's a bit of space, then flip it over, but don't trade places. And the reason you don't trade places is um, it really starts to warp it. But if you keep one on the bottom, and the other one for the top, um, 
they seem to maintain their shape really, really well. And yikes, we've got some reflection happening with these shiny new plates. There we go. Um, so that's just a little tip there. And remember, these eventually will wear out and you can replace them. And what I often do is maybe eventually when this one's really bad, throw this one out, move this one to the bottom and so on. So that's just a little aside. Then you've got three and four. Um, so number three says insert embossing folders hinge first and so like that and so it's just the one and then the three this you're going to do away with those twos and then on here this is if it's your 3d so you're really sharp really thick ones insert embossing folder hinge first so they've got the picture they've got the words so when all else fails stop and read. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cut right now. So I'm putting my paper there. I'm actually going to bring out my stitched shapes dies. These these are old. They're now called dies. They used to be called framelits. And they are circles, ovals, and squares. And I was trying to think today, what dies do I use the most? And I would have to say this just might be one of them. What about you? What are dies um, that you want to, or that you use the most in your machine? Oh, just before I put this in, a little hint. Because these are narrow, you will find that they go in better if this end here is not all straight. So like that, it's almost too big a jump. You need to make like a little ramp. So I'm going to make it bigger so you can see. So you see how I've offset them. But as long as it's a little bit, it just eaves, eases it in. As always, you want to make sure the sides are straight. Now I've got this all wonky. I better start afresh here. And let's try that. So there we go. And it works just like the big one. So because you'll hear a lot of demonstrators call this them the little boss and the big boss because they're stamp and cut and emboss machines and that is a mouthful. So there we go. Now we have, we've already cut out our shape. So how wide is this? This is three and a half inches. So it will cut a lot of, of your dies. So I'm going to just put that there. Now I'm going to emboss, use an embossing folder. So I'm taking away my twos and the embossing folder that I'm going to use is one of the little ones. Now some of the embossing folders come in a pair and the, this is the greenery one that comes in a pair. Uh, so two, and so they're nice and they're narrow and they will go in. We're going to use um, this one here. This is a lovely one too, but we're going to use this and I, I have a reason. So we will do that. Now this is not your super thick one. So we are going to use the number three. So let me just get some of these other things out of the way. What we have in here is a number one. And then that, what does it say on here? A one and a three, but we need the embossing folder in between. And what I'm going to use the embossing folder on here is a piece of the Oso Ombre paper. So this uh, paper comes in celebration, which by the way is ending soon. And, and the other side, it, this one is um, Granny Apple Green or Blackberry Bliss. And then there's also Rococo Rose and um, oh yikes and Bermuda Bay so I am going to do this whole piece I will be cutting it down so I'm going to put the hinge the fold in first and then number three so again I'm not going to make them straight on the end here just on the sides I'll stack them up and run it through like that and then we have this all nicely embossed so it does embossing it does cutting just like the regular one all right so let's move that out of the way 
and move on to the card that we're going to make. But I just wanted to show you that this is a handy dandy little machine. It's actually so cute that I don't know if you can resist it. Uh, but that being said, um, if you have the big one, you might be happy with that. But I'm actually pretty happy that I've got both. Now, what am I doing? I'm spinning around looking for, because usually I have my desk raised a little bit. So there we go. We are going to put this up a little bit. So where you find the little mini machine is on page 170 of the annual catalog. So there's the big one and the mini. The mini is $82. So that qualifies you for a celebration item if you're wanting to order it uh, before the end of celebration. And, and those of you who get my newsletter know that also anybody who orders from me uh, during February. Each week I have a different special going on and uh, for every $30 you put in your you get an entry into a draw um, because February was my birthday month. It's my anniversary of signing up to be a demonstrator month. It's family day. It's Valentine's Day. It's a whole bunch of things. So uh, it's also a month that we need a little excitement, right? So um, that would qualify you for two entrants there. All right. Now, I said I was going to introduce the stamp and cut and emboss machine, and then I was also going to introduce a technique. So let's uh, bring in the pieces that I have planned for this card. I have not made this card yet. I'm living dangerously. Um, so I want this piece that we just embossed to go top to bottom. Let's see. Do I want... I think I might cut a little bit off each end. So I need to end up that it is five inches and this is six inches. So let's take a half inch off of here and a half inch off of here and we'll be down to five inches. I wanted to keep, and this is strictly just me, I wanted to keep the ombre look of the paper. Now, our designer paper, Stamping Up's designer paper, has a white core. Our regular cardstock does not. And I had a piece here to show you. What did I do with it? Oh, I put it right in here, likely. So if I was to tear this, it has color all the way through. See, like that. But if I was to tear this designer paper, well, let's use the darker one. This designer paper that we just cut, see, it is white in the center. So we can get a special effect with that. We can get special effects with this too. But with this, we can bring in a piece of sandpaper or you can bring in an emery board too and just run it over where you've done the embossing and re remove that color and you get another look. So this is the technique I wanted to show you today. So I'm using sandpaper here to show you you can do that. Or you can use an emery board. You might have to press a little bit harder. And again, it depends on the grain of your sandpaper, um, that kind of thing. But you get just a little bit more dimension. You get a little highlighting and it's just a different look that you can there I think that looks pretty good but you see how different that looks because we're taking the color off and letting the white come through so let's start to build our card what I'm going to do is fasten this onto here and it's always tempting to use both sides and I'm going to show you a card where I used two sides of this ombre paper. We did it in my stamping time, my monthly group this month. And the paper is so pretty and so they got to choose what side they wanted to use, which was really fun. And then they shared and it was great. So now we've put that on there. Now a lot of you know if you've stamped with me for a while, I needed a circle so I just cut it out of there because it's going to be hidden. Now I don't always remember to do that, but sometimes I do and it's just a fun way of saving a smidge of paper and I always figure it saves 
a, a smidge in postage perhaps too. It keeps your card just a tiny bit lighter, but um, this card would be just regular postage anyway. The key though is not to put glue in the middle here or you end up with glue right there. And that gets a little messy sometimes. It's not the end of the world, but it, it does increase the, mess, the messiness. There we go. So we're going to press that down and we're going to put that right on the card front right now. I just love those colors. The white and the uh, Blackberry Bliss, they just pop when they're used together. So there we go. And I could have put this on dimensionals. I didn't. That would be totally your choice. I forgot to give the measurements. I was so caught up in the machine. So the Whisper White layer here is three and three quarters by five. The next layer is just one eighth bigger, or you could make it one quarter bigger, but this one is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then the card base is the regular card base. So already it is looking so pretty. Catherine, yes, isn't that neat? I, I love, um, Amy, you're saying you use the stitch shapes dies and the stitch so sweetly dies the most. Yes, um, I use both of those a lot. So I agree with you that with that. This was my planning piece, so I can take that out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is just layer up something right here. So it could be whatever, but I wanted to bring in something that uh, from Celebration because they are ending soon. So I am bringing in a touch of ink and I wanted to show you how I plan a card. So let's get back down just to the white. Now, when I was planning this, and like I said, I haven't done it yet, but I, this was how I planned it. I laid this on here because it's clean right now. And I laid this on here and I thought, okay, my, my, I'll have to make sure to stamp the words first because it's okay if this goes off. And if I angle it that way, um, maybe, okay. So now I've got the idea in my head and we'll just see if that's going to work. Sometimes it, from my head to actuality doesn't translate as well as I think it will, but that is one of the steps. That's one of the ways that I go about doing it. So I'm going to do the words first. They need to be all there. The branch here can go off the paper, right? So I just am going to do it that way and bring in something spongy here it's because it's photopolymer and I'm going to use Blackberry Bliss ink. So nice. I'm just, this is basically all one color here. This, I'm going to move that up so I don't stick my hand in it. And the nice thing about this being a circle is I can twist it if I don't get it quite straight. It's no big deal. And then I'm going to ink up this. This is a slightly larger stamp, so I usually like to ink them upside down. Then I can see the ink being transferred. And now I can wiggle this in right about there. And I'm just taking a moment for the ink to transfer. Ooh, that is very dramatic. I was going to add color, but I don't know if I want to. I just might stop right there. What I was going to do was ink up this, stamp it off once and bring it in. Well, you know what? We can do that together here. And then if um, you will have be able to see the difference and you can make the choice. I've got an old envelope in my garbage. So I, I want to stamp this off because I want it to be lighter than the outline. Okay, and let's bring this in and be ready to tell me which one you like using, which you want like the best, this one or this one. Now, this is a two-step, so it's going to fill in the spaces. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to look so pretty. Okay, which one do you think you like the best with the um, color filled in or not? 
I am going to be looking for your comments as I assemble the rest of this card. So I'm going to fasten this down on this layer here. Well, I'm seeing a lot of you saying color. Well, then I did the right thing, didn't I? Then I am going to put that on with dimensionals. And I, I like to be generous with my dimensionals so they don't cave in the mailing. Oh, come on. Those backings, they have a mind of their own, don't they? All right. And so I, it's the words that I want to have straight and I'm just going to place them where I think they look nice. And I am seeing Courtney on here. Courtney, I haven't seen or heard from you in forever. Welcome. Good to, good to hear from you. And then did you know that we have this gorgeous ribbon? And so I was thinking that it would be nice. Maybe I should have had it just peeking out. Da 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 da. Nothing like changing your mind, right? I think I want I want this ribbon. I'm going to put a bit of adhesive there. And I am going to have this ribbon. Now I have to dodge dimensionals. Come like this. I'm just going to hold it and see if I like that. Yes, I do. Needs a bit more adhesive here. Bring in my ribbon scissors. This is gorgeous ribbon and it's so nice to work with. And this one needs to be cut at an angle there. There we go. And now no one will know that we peeled that apart and went to plan B, right? Oops, get the printing right. There we go. Now I could add um, some rhinestones or something like that, and which I might do. But there's a very simple card doing this. Oh, while I've got everything inked up, I am going to bring back in this and I'm going to do the inside of the card too. So I'll just, <laughs> where do I want it? Up here, down here. I think I want to stamp it off once because when I do the words, whatever I decide, then I want them to be, I can see ink on here. I'm just going to flip this over. I want the words to be the darkest. There we go. There, so we've got the inside ready. Oh, we need to do the envelope, right? So let's bring in, oh, let's close the ink pad first because who knows what I'll stick in it otherwise. So let's bring in the envelope. And we're going to bring this back in and this. So I'm going to run adhesive along the top here. Then I'm going to open it up and run it along the edges. Whoops. There we go. And then bring my designer paper in. I was just checking to see how if it was sticky underneath. Keep my fingers in between until I get things lined up so that it doesn't stick. And I, I'm lining up the edges like that. Now I'll bring my snips back in like this. And Use the edge of my envelope as my guide. Oh, 
you're loving it oh sue i'm glad it it is a very simple card but boy just that little bit of extra texture and now we've got an envelope to match and i just love it i don't know about you but i love it so i wanted to show you a couple of other um cards using this designer paper but using other pieces of it and we did this in stamp club so we did this one here with the rococo rose side and then i flipped the rococo rose over on this card and used the bermuda bay side and then there was the blackberry bliss and then you saw the granny apple green as well so those are just some and this is the other designs um pattern in the designer paper so i just wanted to share that with you and then i have a few more things to share with you one is that celebration is going to end february 28th and that is about i think nine or ten days away so if there's anything from here that you want uh you need to, to make it happen before then the other thing to remember is the great special about signing up as a demonstrator will also end i mean it's always a good deal but you get all that extra paper right now designer paper and i just need wanted to show you i have been making up welcome packets for some new demonstrators that are part of my team so these are getting ready to go out i wanted to share that oh this is Lillian being a little random abstract. I had this in my bin, and I said I needed rhinestones, but this is what I had thought about putting on there. So let's back up just a smidge. What do you think? I think we could add at least one of these, and I think I'm going to add this one here for right now, just like that. These are the pastel pearls from the hydrangea suite, but they go with so many things. But does do you like that? I like. I think that finishes it off. So I I forgot to look in my bin to see what else was in there. Okay, I got sidetracked. So celebration coming to a close. Take care and watch out for that. The other thing is is that I have a class happening right now. Um, and it's an online class, and it is for the Many Messages Bundle. Now, the Many Messages Bundle, I just have to get it. I buried what I was going to share with you. The Many Messages Bundle is found on page 35 of the mini catalog. So there, this stamp set here, and it's all one big stamp set, and it's a really neat one. And then there's a die, which is all one big die and when you cut it out you get well you can just use the die and then have this combination i've sort of layered some of the dies up to show and then i've layered a couple on punches here just to uh show that um but it cuts out all these words and then if you're in the middle of making a card you can just pop it on i did a video uh facebook live and it's now on youtube as well showing this card here and i've done a few other cards using this so there's this one here um just pop that on on this one i used words from another set but i used the dies so you can definitely do that this i used the dies to create the background and then pop some words on top this i just popped that on there and then um, that's how that went and uh, well i've got tons of samples so the class is free if you buy the bundle from me if you want to buy it some of you are demonstrators and if you're buying it from yourself um, or whatever then i have the pdf and the video tutorial uh, available for 15 dollars. so contact me if you're interested in that and uh just a little bit more i have had some mail arrive and i wanted to do a little bit of sharing and i know that some of you love the show and tell or the sharing so let's see what's in the mailbox today here's a card that my friend joanne made it's gorgeous embossing here and just as simple and just but it it just is so pretty and it looks like it's melon mambo and rococo rose there which work beautifully together and here's another one that she did using the true love designer paper and she colored just a little bit of it and then the um thinking of you is from oh 
It's from that amazing, other amazing word set, uh, Happy Thoughts, that's what it is, came to me there. And she's embossed in the background as well. This one I just received today. Square cards are big right now. And this is a square card that I got from another demonstrator named Carmen. And then she, so she's used the celebration paper here, but the pretty perennials dies and stamps here. So it looks so pretty together. And this is a card that I uh, did on an um, actually stamping staycation and then I received it from Kelly as a birthday card so let me just show it for, see it stands up like that and then you write your message on the back so I really liked how that came together so and it's using the um, flowers for every season designer paper and here's one from Donna and Donna's watching here today and this is just a fun uh, different fold so this is how the card looks when you get it and then it pops up like that so like that so thank you everybody for the cards and I just wanted to share that with you and I think that's largely it for today so thank you for joining me um, I know this was spur of the moment but I just wanted to share some of that things those things and I know that you liked to find out about them too. So take care and have some fun in crafting and enjoy that gorgeous weather out there. Bye-bye.